So I would like to thank all the groups who sent me their documents, their slides, their information to make this lecture, and uh, all the teams, my colleagues, who treat patients with Delta hepatitis together with, with us. So my conflict of interest, I've been two times world champion for the football, uh, with Zidane, Mbappé, and uh, last year uh, we won, the, Algeria won the African Cup of football. So this is my uh, conflict of uh, disclosure slides. So this is the agenda, an introduction, do we need HDV cure? Then the two main class uh, who are advanced in development, entry inhibitor, bulivertid, and prenylation inhibitors, lunafarnib. And I will not discuss early drug development in phase one. And finally, uh, take home messages. Uh, first, a quotation from uh, Ibn Sina Avicen. In, uh, the, there are no incurable disease, only the lack of will. There are no worthless drugs, only the lack of knowledge. So I think at this time already, he wanted to cure many diseases. He was professor of medicine at Baghdad University Hospital. So HBV cure development has been fantastic with many approved treatments, tenofovir, antecavir, TAF, and now we have maintenance therapy, and patients with hep B do not make events like decompensation, cancer, so they have a good life. But for hep D, we need a cure. HDV might be underestimated. You have seen uh, George and Mario, and maybe since we don't test, maybe there might be more with 60 million. There has been recent meta-analyse showing that maybe we have more patients. We don't know the exact number. Are we under or overestimated? Delta hepatitis increases the risk of cirrhosis. HDV requires only a very small amount of HBS to complete viral packaging. We have no available therapy expect peg interferon with many failures and many safety concerns. So we need an HDV cure because we have many patients going to cancer complication and death. The virus, we have, you have all this information in the paper, will be published in Liver International. It's a small virus, 36 nanometer in diameter. It needs the B replication because it's the same viral envelope with HBS. There's a small HDV RNA genome and we have also the HDV ribonucleocapsid so it's a very interesting, and we have to learn to understand the viral cycle to develop targets and new drugs therapy. The life cycle of HGV and targets for new drugs in uh, development. And I, I want to thank also Dimitri who helped me for these slides. You see the HGV have the N3 through the NTCP receptors. And just to show you the drugs in development and the mode of actions, you know that N3 inhibitors, believed will block the N3. So it has interest in Delta and of course also in HBV drug developments. Then the genome go into the nucleus. You have several steps for viral replication. I will not go in details, but we can have discussion during the coffee break. And then you have also the prenylation, and lunafarnib inhibits HDV prenylation through, which is very important for packaging and secretion. So during the next uh, part of the lecture, you will discuss on entry inhibitors, bolivertid, and prenylation inhibitor, lunafarnib, who are in advanced drug development. But we have also HBSAG, secretion inhibitors, uh, in development. So, introduction, we need HDV cure, and we need to improve knowledge on virology, on targets to develop the drugs. So first, entry inhibitors, bolivertid. Bulivertid specifically binds to sodium toracolate co-transporting polypeptide, NTCP, at the basolateral membrane of differentiated hepatocytes. It has a strong inhibitory effect to HDV infection, and it exclusively targets parenchymal liver cells. So you know that NTCP has been identified by the Chinese group as the receptor for B and delta. Bulivertid has been dosed to more than 600 patients with Delta B and healthy subjects. Monotherapy induced HGV RNA declines and improved IL3 levels in patient Delta in the MIR-202 trial. It has been presented by Heiner Wedemeyer at ISOL. And also the combination of 2 mg or 5 mg with PEG interferon induced synergistic effects. 
And it has been designed, and US and Europe will fund drugs with FDA breakthrough and um, European Prime. You see it was presented last WSLD meeting by Heiner, the MIR 203 extension study design with 10 milligram beliverted, so high dose plus PEG interferon in comparison with beliverted plus TDF. And you can see uh, the results with a strong antiviral effect, reduction in HDV RNA, and you can see median HDV RNA log reduction in the combination of beliverted plus PEG interferon, which was a synergistic effect. You see the individual HDV RNA kinetics to see for all patients and not only the median. And you can see that all patients in both treatment arms achieve a more than one log decrease in RNA. The HBS AG response, more than one long decline or undetectable. You can see that for the arms of two milligram plus PEG or five milligram, there was more than one log decline in 46%, 20%, few in the 10 milligrams dose, and none in the PEG interferon arm. There is ongoing clinical trials. The MIR 204 included 175 patients in combination with PEG. Enrollment has been completed in December, last December. Patients are randomized in four treatment arms. You have the standard of care, PEG interferon. You have two milligram plus interferon, 10 milligram plus interferon, and you have a mono arm with 10 milligrams liberty. The patients are randomized. The primary endpoint is test 10 biological response defined as negative PCR results for HDV RNA at week 24 after end of treatment. And uh, I agree with Pietro that we should change maybe the definition, the sustained biological response. It's not similar to hep -C. We have to have long-term follow-up to follow the patient. But I think that if we have also this primary endpoint, it's encouraging. We need also long-term endpoint as no events for decompensation, for cancer, and I think this will follow. This study is ongoing in France, in Russia, in Romania, in Moldavia, and many French investigators are uh, in the, among the attendees. There's also other ongoing clinical trials, MIR 301, with 150 patients, three treatment arms in six countries, Germany, Russia, USA, Georgia, Sweden, Italy, and you can see the different arms with different dose of Bulliverti, 2 and 10 milligram. Also in France, there's an ATU, you know it's uh, access treatment for patients. It's Bulliverti, 2 milligram, self-administrated by the patients once daily. It's more than 90 patients have already been included and it's ongoing. Any doctors, hepatologists can ask for the French health authority for the ATU for his patients. The inclusion criteria are compensated liver cirrhosis or severe fibrosis grade three, evaluated by either liver biopsy or fibroscan, or fibrosis grade two with persistent ALT elevation. Exclusion criteria is decompensated liver disease because at this time we don't have enough data for decompensated liver disease. So also I encourage, if uh, you need this, it's very simple because you have just one page to file for information to send to the health French authorities. Finally, summary for Bolivartid, it's an entry inhibitor, so it binds to NTCP, high efficacy and favorable tolerability. High dose therapy, 10 milligrams was safe and well tolerated. Bolivartid monotherapy with 10 milligrams, continuous linear DNA RNA decline over 48 weeks, rapid ILT reduction normalization, and five milligram BID was comparable to 10 milligrams quasi. And in the combination with PEG, 87% of patients become HDV RNA undetectable at week 48 of therapy, which could be also considered for patients with cirrhosis, breeding fibrosis, high activity inflammation, high ILT, a maintenance therapy, a therapy that block the inflammation, block the virus, finally uh, allows the RNA to be undetectable, the normalized transaminases. Let's move to prenylation inhibitors, lonafernib. Lonafernib is a small molecule first in class oral prenylation inhibitor. It's well characterized in patients because in several indications, there has been large number of patients who have been treated. 2000 in oncology program by Turing Merck, more than 90 children those in the Progeria program by Boston Children's Hospitals, 
more than 170 patients dose in the Delta program. And with longest duration of a dosing with more than 10 years, uh, in particular also in uh, children with progeria. Most commonly reported adverse events are GI-related, class effect, well-managed with prophylactic treatments, with antivirals and antimetics, and it has been also designed as US and European orphan FDA breakthrough MEA prime. You can see the phase two data, and uh, two lonafarnib-based regimens have been identified for registration. One all oral, lonafarnib 50 milligram BID, plus ritonavir, burst by ritonavir, and lonafarnib plus PEG interferon. And you can see it's a synergistic effect when compared to the PEG interferon plus tenofovir as a historical group, the HIDIT-1 study. You see the phase two program, dose combination and endpoints for the all oral lunafernib boost with ritonavir. 33% of patients has a more than two log decline from baseline viral at week 24 for the RNA, and 47% has normalization of ILT. And if you take a composite endpoint, transaminase and decline, 29% of patients achieve this. In the combination of lunafernib plus PEG interferon, 78% patients have a two log decline, more than two log decline, and 88% have normalization of ILT. This is encouraging data, and it was the basis for the design of the FAST3 data. We have to recognize that it's a early endpoint and it's a small number of patients, uh, but we have now a very large study with 400 patients that deliver FAST3 study. In this study, with 400 patients, you have four arms, with a run-in with next, then all oral, lunafernibretonavir, combo with PEG interferon, a comparator arm with pegylated interferon, monotherapy as a standard of care, and the placebo, and the 24 weeks follow-up. And this large first three study, primary endpoint at week 48, will be more than two log decline and normalization on LT. Secondary endpoint are very important, histologic improvement, more than two points in improvement in uh, inflammatory score, no progression in fibrosis, improvement of fibrosis. The LIF study, you have uh, seen the interesting presentation by Pietro with lambda interferon, who could have a better safety profile. Uh, Lonaferni plus PEG interferon for delta, and you can see early result that was very uh, interesting in terms of synergistic efficacy. The summary for Lonaferni, we have high efficacy in phase two study, favorable to reliability, most common adverse events are GI, class effect. There's a synergistic effect with PEG interferon. There is an ongoing phase three deliver global study. And PEG interferon lambda plus lunafernib combination is in development. There has been regulatory designation as a neurofound disease, FDA breakthrough, EMEA prime, and we are waiting for the interesting result of the next study. Finally, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the take home message. HDV is a defective virus which needs HPV replication present for its own viral replication. HDV, similarly to HBV, infects hepatocytes via high specific interaction with human and TCP expressed on basolateral membrane of hepatocytes. Current treatment of CUR is PEG interferon for 48 weeks. For patients who fail interferon, there is no therapeutic option available. Drugs in development include entry inhibitors, Mercludex, prenylation inhibitors, lonafernib, and HBSAG release inhibitors. For bulivertid and lonafernib, the addition of PEG interferon appears to be synergistic. There is a need for long-term follow-up of patients, long-term endpoint, strong and robust endpoint, as no events, no cancer, and no decompensation. HBV cure program will also lead to HDV cure, but in a long term, so we need a rapid HDV cure program. We need this HDV cure program. I think that I have convinced you. Thank you for your presence.